search on this one. This was about an article from Graham Hancock on the Flagrant uh, podcast with Andrew Schultz and um, the other comedian. So we're going to jump into this one too. Let's just keep going. I, I want to talk about Antarctica. Mm-hmm. Because I think this is going to be the new obsession. I feel like it's trending super high. Mm -hmm. Who knows if there's any truth to it. But a friend of ours, who will remain nameless, went there. Yeah. Got to go on a cool experience trip, etc. Mm -hmm. And he said a couple interesting things. He said the, the mountains looked eerily pointy and four-sided. Mm -hmm. uh, he said way more mountainous than he thought it would be. Mm -hmm. I think the illusion made from looking at maps and watching penguins is By the way, just you can see flat. mountains. You can see mountains on the Orontius Phineas map version. Of oh, is that what the little etch is? Around the edges there. Interesting. Those are mountains. Now, he also said this. He said a couple things. He said there is a pact with every country that has a slice of it that they will not dig or remove any minerals from Antarctica. Mm -hmm. And he even said that a scientist was there, said to them, World War III will not start until one of these countries breaks that pact. Mm -hmm. They are clearly protecting or preserving something that may or may not be under, I believe it's three miles, Mark was saying earlier, at its thickest of ice. Mm -hmm. Now. What if recording high quality content, good. editing like a pro, and streaming like a star was as simple Mark, maybe you should describe the thing that you were saying before about there was a time where yeah, Antarctica... I was reading an article that perhaps 90 million years ago, there was a lush rainforest that is now covered in miles of ice yeah. on the Antarctic continent. Yeah, that, that's probably true. If you go, if you go back that far, uh, you would find that um, the Earth's climate was very different from, from how it is today. And there's, no, there's undoubtedly a time, they found fossils on Antarctica, there's undoubtedly a time when, when Antarctica was, was lush and green. The question is, was it lush and green during the lifetime of the human species? Yes, this um, is where it gets tricky. And, and this, is where, this is where it gets tricky. Uh, our, the, 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 the Homo sapiens line descends from a line that goes back about six million years, not much further than that, if we accept conventional evolutionary theory. So six million years ago, Antarctica is supposed to have been as cold and as frozen as it is today. Now, when I wrote Fingerprints of the Gods in 1995, which is, which is my first book tracing the possibility of a lost civilization, I was very interested in Antarctica, and I was interested in it because of the work of a previous researcher called Charles Hapgood. Charles Hapgood wrote a number of very important books. One of them is called Maps of the Ancient Sea Kings, which precisely goes into this issue of ancient maps that don't fit our understanding of what the world was, how the world was supposed to be known at that time. Um, and another is called The Path of the Pole. And he uh, proposed a phenomenon that he called Earth Crust Displacement, whereby from time to time, the entire outer crust of the Earth, like the skin of an orange, might shift leaving the core of the earth in place so that it could shit like so if you imagine a very loose orange skin the fruit is inside it's staying in place but you're shifting the skin around it well obviously then if that happens Antarctica oh. could have been in warmer latitudes and could have been shifted into colder latitudes and how often does this happen well does it happen at all is the fir is the right. first question i mean of, of, of all the the theories i've looked at and supported this is this is the one that i've come in for the for the most criticism for. Mm. Um, and I've been much more interested recently in the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis and the notion that the, the, uh, the a cataclysm occurred around 12,800 years ago caused by impacts of m comet fragments. And we can go into that. Um, but when I wrote Fingerprints of the Gods, although I was interested in comets, I was more interested in Earth crust displacement. Um, and and the, the standard academic response to that is, look, Antarctica has been frozen for millions <laughs> of years. Um, and that rules out the whole Earth crust displacement argument. Um, I think that even those who are still researching this field would prefer it to be the mantle rather than the crust of the earth that moves. Again, it's very technical, that moves in one piece. Um, there's a... But the idea there's, is... There's an it, Italian admiral called Flavio Barbiero who, who wrote an article for my website suggesting that earth crust displacement could be kicked off by a comet impact which hits, a, hits the earth a glancing blow mm. and, and causes a, a, a shift of this kind taking place. But by and large, I don't, I don't argue these days that, uh, that Antarctica and earth crust displacement are the mechanism we should be looking at. I'm, more, I'm much more interested in the very solidly scientifically 
slightly grounded younger Dryas impact. Mm -hmm. Back to what, back in 1995, when I wrote Fingerprints of the Gods, I was searching around for many possibilities that could have caused a global cataclysm in the range of 12 to 13,000 years ago, because that's what all the astronomy pointed out, 12 to 13,000 years ago. And Hapgood's theory uh, seemed to me a very valuable and useful one. I still won't write it off. I won't dismiss it entirely. But I've shifted in the direction of um, uh, the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, simply because I'm in a constant argument with mainstream academia. Mm -hmm. And the issue to me, the most important issue to me, uh, is the issue issue of a global cataclysm at the end of the Ice Age. What, what caused that cataclysm is a secondary issue. The mm. cataclysm itself is the primary issue. And I found the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis uh, a better, much more scientifically grounded explanation for that cataclysm uh, than the notion of Earth crust displacement. But do any archaeologists or any of these uh, prehistorians dispute the Younger Dryas there, there's a, there's still a lot of argument around it. There's there's about 60 major scientists um, who are involved in the Comet Research Group. They're all credentialed scientists. They've all published dozens of papers in peer-reviewed journals, including Nature, including Scientific Reports, and many, many others on the on the hypothesis. But there's also a group of academics who, who are opposed to it and, and uh, dispute that any impact ever took place. And then even in those who, who, who do accept that the Younger Dryas was a cataclysm, some think that it may have been caused by solar activity rather than by, by comet impact. How would that work? Well, it would certainly, it could work um, at the end of the Younger Dryas. There are two moments in the Younger Dryas. The beginning is 12,800 years ago. It's a very strange moment in Earth history. This is when um, this is this is when the world's climate, which has been warming up for a few thousand years, the Ice Age is still very much present. Have big ice caps on North America, big ice caps on Northern Europe, um, but it's been warming up gradually. And then 12,800 years ago, two things happened at once. First, a sudden cataclysmic drop in climate. The cold, it gets incredibly cold. Uh, as cold as it was at the peak of the Ice Age more than 20,000 years ago. It gets incredibly cold. But then puzzlingly, there's a release of water into the world ocean. I say puzzlingly because when the Earth is freezing, you would not expect melt water to be going into the world ocean. It should be staying on the ice caps. And I cite the work of Cesare Miliani and his work on the submergence of Bahamian corals. This is how, how do you know that sea level rose? There are certain corals that can only exist within a certain number of feet of the, of the sea's surface. Because they need the sunlight. Yeah, to... when they drown, yeah. that tells you the sea level has, has risen. And they point to a significant sea level rise 12,800 years ago at exactly the moment of the steep freeze. The comet impact hypothesis explains that because it says that the shock at the heat of the impact of large fragments of a comet on the North American and European ice caps would have been sufficient to release that freezing water into the world ocean, to cut the Gulf Stream. That the central heating system of our planet. It's called the gro global meridional overturning circulation. It's these currents of warm and cold water that flow around the planet and yeah. they, they, the Gulf Stream was cut and the Earth got extremely cold. So I think the comet impact hypothesis does best explain that. But so just r real quick, so comet hits, yeah. cuts the Gulf Stream, mm -hmm. cutting the Gulf Stream. It cuts the Gulf Stream because it releases a huge quantity of meltwater from the North American ice cap, almost instantaneously. So the comet hits the ice yeah. that is in North America. Yeah, and Europe. And Europe. Mm -hmm. That water cuts the Gulf Stream yes. because it releases all this, which was frozen it's freezing water. Freezing water gotcha, goes gotcha. into the world ocean. And temperature plummets. Temperature plummets. But at the same time, there's much more potential water in the oceans so that when the temperature does rise, now you have that meltwater. Well, no, so no, now we need to go on. 12,800 years ago, in the 1,000 or 1,200 years after that, that's a window when all the great Ice Age megafauna go extinct. That's megafauna are... Saber-toothed tigers, right. woolly mammoths, mastodons, right. giant sloths, the whole collection yep. of, of famous Ice Age megafauna, they all go extinct in that window. Hmm. Um, and, and clearly, they didn't go extinct for no reason. It's the cataclysm of the Younger Dryas that made the mix. Have you seen the, oh God, what is the gentleman's name? He's a guy who I believe like excavates up in Alaska for gold. I'm pretty sure it is, I'm forgetting what it is right now. But um, Tired of overpaying for rent? 
What if we told you that you could live somewhere for... There are like images of woolly mammoths mm. who have been, had like their legs completely shattered, mm -hmm. but they're intact. Yeah. And is this a boneyard that's been... Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That, that, that's very, very, very interesting. I've not been there. I've not looked into it yet, so I can't speak authoritatively about it. But it might speak to your opinion right there. Like, what, what I can say it? is that at Serrania de Lindosa in Colombia, there is an eight kilometer long rock art panel dated to 12,800 years ago, which shows these megafauna. It shows, it shows many of the extinct megafauna from that, from that, from that period. Um, to get back to the point, uh, so we have this window of about 1,200 years where the Earth is very cold, the megafauna go extinct. But then 11,600 years ago, just as fast and dramatically as the Earth went cold, the Earth goes warm. You're looking okay. at a 10 degree rise in global temperatures in, in a couple of hundred years. It goes very, very, in geological terms, very rapid and very fast. And, that, and sea level rises very quickly. And what is the cause 11, of 11,600 years ago, it's, it's called meltwater pulse 1B. There's another collapse of the ice sheets and huge amounts of water go into the world ocean. Now that, that could realistically be caused by a sudden burst of solar activity, which melted down those ice sheets. But that's not what I go with. I, I, I still prefer the notion that we're dealing with multiple bombardments from comet fragments. And in this case, you're looking at a comet fragment that goes into a world ocean uh, that sends up a huge amount of water vapor into the upper atmosphere, creates a greenhouse effect, and accounts for the warming that takes place at that time. So two comets. One that cooled things down and one that heated things up? Yeah, yeah. Any idea why one would cool down and one would heat up? Uh, it depends where the impact is. If the impact's on an ice cap and it's releasing enormous amounts of meltwater into the world ocean, you're going to make the world very cold. Okay. If the impact's in a world ocean and it's put, putting a huge amount of water vapor into the upper atmosphere, it's Got a greenhouse it. effect. Got and it. the world is going to get warmer. It's all theory. Mm -hmm. It's not fact. All, what is fact is the sudden warming at the end of the Younger Dryas and the sudden freezing at the beginning of the Younger Dryas. So we're searching for explanations for that. We're That's searching for explanations. I've, I've picked pick the one I, I back, but uh, I'm not claiming that I have to be right. It's uh, the, What I do think is really important is recognizing this was a global cataclysm. It was sustained. It wasn't just a minute. It went on for a thousand years plus, uh, and it's in our backyard. It's in very relatively recent human history. We're almost at the edge of history when we go to 11,600 years ago. That's Weirdly, the date that Gobekli Tepe in Turkey is built, 11,600 years ago. <laughs> that, weirdly, is the date that Plato's Timaeus and Critias gives for the submergence of Atlantis, 11,600 years ago, be before our time. So what's happening to humanity in this 1,200-year window? I need, to be, I need to be clear about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, the, because uh, the archaeologists roll their eyes at any mention of Atlantis. If you, you even say the word Atlantis, right. they're automatically regarded as a member of the lunatic fringe. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and if you've even said that word, all your work, all the 30 years of work <laughs> right. you've done, the thousand dives that you've done yeah, on yeah. continental shelves all around the world, yeah. all of those can be written off simply because you said the word Atlantis. It's, right. it's flat earth for archaeologists. Wow. That's crazy. Man, that's freaking crazy right now. Can you do that? That's bananas. That is so bananas. But that's part of life, right? So, it's exciting. The hell is that? I wasn't aware that Amazon actually owns Twitch. You guys know that? I know that. I found out that's long ago. I can't even play a game. You know why? Because my daughter took my controller. She, I was charging it. And she used it and killed it. So I came in game tonight. I think I wanted to. But it's alright. I'm going to try to see if we jump on this tomorrow and make this happen. You guys have been great. Great live chat, you've been amazing. And um, let's do it again. Oh, don't forget to, uh, to like, subscribe, and um, hit the bell, mark notifications. Do what you gotta do. So, know about the next live. All right, people. All right.